In today's beginner-friendly video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about organizing brushes in Procreate's brush library. You'll know all the basics and features, I'll show you how to move brushes, rename them, duplicate them, I'll even tell you about the Recents folder, and I'll give you a few other tips and tricks. If you're interested, please keep on watching. Hello and welcome to Color with Kendi. Today's video is another step-by-step -step video. We're going to do this together, so grab your iPad and your pencil and let's get straight into it. Okay, for this segment of the video, open up any canvas. It can be an illustration that you've made, or a blank canvas. And I just wanted to walk you through the brush library. So this is the brush library. It's the brush icon right here. And what you'll see is that you will see any imported brushes right at the top. These are all brushes that I've imported. These are not default. They will always be towards the top. And then if you scroll, you will see all of Procreate's default brush sets. So this is where all of your brush sets are. You will know if something is a default Procreate brush set if it has a very specific icon. If there's no specific icon, that means it's not a Procreate default set. So here are all your Procreate default sets. And if you tap on a set, you can open it up and you'll see all the brushes here. To use a brush, just tap on it. So that's kind of the basics of the brush library. Now, one thing to remember is that in Procreate, you can use any brush of your choice from your brush library for smudging and for erasing too. There's just a different menu for that. So let's say I wanted to use maybe one of the default brushes here, Peppermint. It's Procreate default brush, but I wanted to use it for smudging. What you can do is you can just tap and hold and you'll be able to smudge with that brush. Now, not all brushes are great for smudging, but this is basically how you can use any brush in your brush library as a smudger. The other thing that you should know is let's say you wanted to erase with that particular brush. Same thing, tap and hold, and you'll be able to erase with that brush. So anything that's in your brush library can not only be used as a brush, but also as a smudger and an eraser. And you'll get varying results, but that's just something that's good to know. So now let's go back to the brush library, just tap on it, and let's talk about how you can utilize it a little bit better. So there's a feature that I wanted to tell you about. It's called the recent feature. So what you want to do is scroll up to the top, and you'll see the star here and it will say recent. So let's say you've used a bunch of different brushes in an illustration and they're from different sets and you want to access them quickly. If you tap on recent, you'll be able to see all of them. These are all brushes from different sets, but they're all easily accessed right here. So this is very useful when you're working on an illustration and there are a bunch of different brushes and you don't want to fiddle and go into the different sets each time. Just go to your recents and all of your recent brushes will be here. That's a very useful feature. The other useful feature that I wanted to talk about is pinning, pinning brushes. So let's say there's a brush that you use a lot, but it's a little bit cumbersome for you to find it every single time. So what you can do is to pin the brush. In order to pin the brush, you'll need to go to your recents and then you can swipe to the left and tap on pin. And what it does is it pins it towards the top of your recents and it will always remain there. Even if you haven't used the brush recently, it will still remain in your recents, which is a really good tool if it's a brush that you're going to use again and again and again, and you need easy access to it. So that's another really cool trick about using the brush library. Just pin whatever you're going to use quite often. Now that you know the basics, let's get into some more detail. So let's talk about moving brushes and brush sets. So I have a number of different brush sets here. Let's say I wanted to change the order. In order to do that, just tap and hold and then move your brush set. Pretty simple. So I'll show you again, tap, hold and move it and release. And that will just change up the order of your brush set. It's the same concept for moving brushes as well. So let's say I go into this brush set here and I wanted to move one of these brushes up to the top. Tap, hold it, and then 
you can move the brush. Now let's say I wanted to move a brush all the way down, same thing, tap, hold, and then use one hand to scroll and then release and that will move your brush. So that's a very convenient thing if you want to change up the order of your brushes and brush sets. Now let's talk about how you can rename brushes and brush sets. So in order to rename a brush set, just tap on the icon and you'll get a couple options here to rename, delete, share, and duplicate. Just tap on rename and you'll be able to change the name. In order to rename a brush, all you have to do is tap on the brush. So I'm going to tap on it. And then what you want to do is go to the segment that says about the brush and you can rename it here. So you can tap here and you can change the name right there. So sometimes you want to organize your brushes and just change the names of your brushes and brush sets. So that's how you would do it. Next up, let's talk about duplicating. So sometimes you want to make a duplicate of a brush and change it up. How can you do that? Just go to the brush, swipe to the left, tap on duplicate, and then you can go in to the brush studio and make the changes that you want to the brush. I like to do this because this way I'm not changing the original, keeping the original intact and I can change the new file. Now let's say you wanted to make a duplicate of a brush set. Tap on it and tap on duplicate. So just tap on the icon and tap on duplicate. Now let's talk about creating a new brush set because sometimes there are particular brushes from different sets that you always want to use and you don't want to rely on the recent folder. What you can do is create a new brush set. So in order to do that, what you want to do is move your pencil downwards until you see this little button. You won't typically see it. It'll typically be like this, but you have to move this downwards just a little and then tap here. What you will do is end up creating a new set. And now I can just rename it, whatever. I'm just going to call it new. And now what you can do is start to move your favorite brushes into the set. So now let's say I go into my messy watercolor set and I want to move a couple brushes. What I want to do is duplicate them first and then move them. So I'm going to duplicate this. That way you're not moving the original. And maybe I want to duplicate this. And then what you can do is you can drag them into your new set. So I'm going to start with this one here. Tap and hold and drag it and then make sure that you drag it right into your new set. I'll show you that again because it can be a little bit tricky. So I have this dark edge watercolor, which I have. It's a second copy. It's a duplicate. Tap on it, tap and hold and then drag it. Make sure it opens up that brush set and then drop it in. Now I can continue to add more brushes to this or I could stop here. It's really your choice and you can always rename them. So this is a good way to organize brushes that you really, really like putting them into one set that is always easily accessed. Now let's talk about deleting brush sets. So when you have a lot of brushes, it can get a little bit overwhelming. I don't have too many because I have deleted quite a few, but it's really important to delete the ones that you're not going to use. And the easiest way to do that is to just tap on the icon until you open up the menu and then just tap on delete and it will delete the set. Now, something to keep in mind is once it's deleted, it is gone and you can't get access to it again from your brush library. So make sure that you have a backup just in case you need to access that brush set in the future. So let's talk about backing up brushes, individual brushes and brush sets. So let's say that there is a particular brush that you want to back up. You don't want to back up the entire brush set, just a particular brush. What you want to do is tap on the brush, swipe to the left, and then tap on share. And it will export it for you. And then you can save it to your files or you can save it to Dropbox and it will save it as a single brush. But I don't typically do that. I usually save the entire brush set. To back up a brush set, just tap on the icon here until this menu opens up and tap on share and it will export it. And now you can airdrop it if you'd like, or you could save it to your files or save to Dropbox and it will save it as a dot brush set file. So let me just show you. I'm going to save it to my iCloud. Next. 
tap on save. Now I can go and check if it's there, go to my iCloud drive and it's right here. So it's messy watercolor extras dot brush set. It will save it as a brush set file and you can back up all of your different brushes this way. An easier way to do this actually is to drag and drop. So let me show you that. So make sure you're in Procreate, swipe up and then take your files, your folders menu and drag it and drop it to the side so that you have two windows open. And then you can make sure that you have your brush library open and you can take your brush, drag it, drop it. It will take a moment. There we go. I can drag this one and drop it. It takes a little bit of time because sometimes these brush sets are a bit big. Basically drag and drop. And you can do the same thing with brushes too. So let's say I wanted to save this one, drag it and drop it. So this is how you can back up your brushes. I highly recommend that you back up your brushes because that way you will never completely lose them in case something happens to procreate, stops working, at least you have your backup. The last thing I wanted to talk about today is adding dividers. So if you have a lot of brushes and you want to categorize them and put them in separate segments, you may want to add dividers that look like this. I actually have two right here. So this separates my brushes from the Procreate default brushes, which I don't generally use. So in order to create a divider like this, scroll all the way up to the top until you see this button right here, tap on it, and then you can select emojis if you'd like. That's one way to create a divider, or you can just select the asterisk and that becomes your divider. And this is an empty set. There's nothing in the set. It's just meant to be a divider. So it's easy to manage and easy to see them. So I have a little bit more organizing to do. I have some duplicate sets here, so I need to work on that. But I hope that this video gave you all of the tools you need to start using the brush library to your advantage and to start organizing it and improve your workflow. If you learned something new from this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or anything that you'd like me to go into more detail on, let me know in the comments. I will see you in the next video. Bye.